Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the PMA LCS Summer Slam Week 2. Uh, final game of a week two. This is going to be a best of two uh, versus LLL and Heroes. My name is Sean Minbung Shannon, and I will be casting your match tonight. Uh, so we have Hoagies Heroes versus Labby's Lusty Lads uh, going up against each other tonight. And uh, as it stands right now, Labby's Lusty Lads are uh, t they have tied their last series, which was against uh, Biscuit Force 5, while Heroes uh, suffered a 0-2 defeat to the Katarina Wine Mixer uh, last week. So we're going to uh, probably hopefully get into picks and bans here very soon. Uh, how's everyone doing? I see that we have 11 people. If someone, I'm going to make a post about this, or if someone wants to make a post about it while I just continue talking, that would be great. Uh, game one was MVP tie. Was. Ah. So there was already a game one. I see. Game one. There was a tie between Iron Four Noob and Neil the Steel. I can't break that tie. So if you want to go vote in it and you already and you saw the game, please go vote for that right there as Iron Four Noob and Neil the Steel are the two right there that we'd be looking at. We're going to be moving into pick ban here very shortly. So, in case there's a VOD issue with game one, I'm going to need you to improvise a recap of what happened in the game. So, uh, I was in my previous game, so the recap was they did some stuff on Labby's Lusty Lads, and then Hero, Hokies Heroes did more stuff, and Neil the Steel and Iron Ford Noob were, like, really doing stuff. So then they kept on doing more stuff, and they attacked, and the other team attacked, and then boom, and then slap and then pow, and then all the Batman comic arts, and then they killed the Nexus, and like that, that was crazy. I think there was a cat. I forget. Um, so that was uh, game one. And I'm just waiting to see. Uh, I think someone broke the MVP for game one was Neil the Steel, stealing it away from Iron Ford Noob. Wow, what a guy. God damn, this is great casting. I think the VOD is lost forever. What a tragedy. Where did y'all stream it on? Did you stream it on Vicer? Okay, that's cool. By the way, y'all should drop a follow. Yep. No, of course not. All right, joystick. Whatever y'all say. No VOD available. Too bad. Man, that does suck. Because I was going to go look at it. I love watching. Well, while I'm waiting for... I don't know what's taking so long. How long does it take to make a... Can you see the chat in Game by, sir? Okay. Okay. Do you have the spec link? 
Chris. All right, good. Let's switch over to that because we're now into picking bands as it's starting up on a Nautilus band. Going to be the first band right here. Twitch band. I don't know. Spoop's not playing in this game, so that's a little bit interesting. Um, maybe they see him in the lobby and they're spooked about it. But um, hey, all right, I'm doing that. Really, just be interested to see what heroes bands here. All right, Caitlin. So, so far, uh, a good and a Swain taken away from Hillary Clinton. I do like that. Swain's in a good state right now. We saw him in both games of CP versus L69SD uh, over on twitch.tv slash chat underscore penguin. You can go watch the VODs on that. They actually are available. So there. And the Mordecai's are taken away from the likes of most likely, I'm guessing like Janko and Chain maybe, or even Joystick Bukakapora and the Kled Band. So really focusing out Hillary Clinton's champion pool right here. But that means that people like Iron Four Noob and Hillary and Neil Steele can get their pick later, but they're going to go with a Nami first pick, giving Captain of Hoagie's Hero saying, I'm going to get my Nami. Even if it feels a little fishy, I'm going to get it. Looking at these picks right now. You can have music going in the back if there isn't music, by the way. Siver going down for Joystick, most likely. Siver, I think something like a Siver Yumi, Siver Morgana wouldn't be too bad. Siver Karma, even. Very strong. But it's going to be the Thresh, and I feel like that's a Labby special, or if it's Django Unchained, but be really interesting to see where that goes. I'm trying to try to pressure the Nami out with kill threat in this bot lane. I can't wait till Sivir's not strong. Tristana here. So this is a flex. I know that it can be played in the bot lane, but it can go top or mid, which is a nice flex that you know, we've seen other people play. I know that we've seen Bukake Poru play it last week. And the Sejuani coming in for Neil the Steel. I really like that pick. I think she's extremely strong right now. And I'm just drinking some Arnold Palmer. Don't mind me. It's funny watching Sean commentary having no context about game one. You're right. Kha'Zix going in there for the jungler. I, I don't know who plays that on there. I don't. So you're, so they're just literally about to four ban Hillary Clinton. Something, I think, Hillary Clinton. Ooh, something I've noticed. Happy by three does not have the correct clan tag. Neil the Steel has no clan tag, and Jenko and Chain is still rocking the Popo clan tag. Mad respect to Popo, but hmm, interesting. The Morgana coming out. We know that Bukake Poro plays that. I actually played with Bukake Poro one time back in the olden days of PMALCS when it was only season three. Okay, I'm done. And the Hillary Clinton bans continue as Nasus will not be playing this game. No dog champs. Bark, bark. I feel like, what does Hillary Clinton go to after this? Ergot? That's what I'm expecting. Really, I'm expecting an Urgot in the top lane, and the Alawi, the Alawi band to me almost signals that it's going to be an Urgot on the side of Hokies Heroes. Now, Labby's Lusty Lads. Looking right here, probably going to want to pick 
mid lane here, I think. Something like a Malzahar. You could see the spicy Nocturne mid, I'm sure. But, and there it is, the Malzahar, Bukake Poro, classic. Uh, and the reason why I say you have to pick mid there is that you've been investing a lot of bands into top side, and you're still red side pick, so you still want to try to get a counter pick if you feel like you can. Um, and I think here you get the Urgot, and then you decide where you want to put the Tristana. Okay, well they've decided where they want to put the Tristana, because I don't think Hillary Clinton's going to play Tristana top. Um, only problem with the Urgot... Yep, as it's the Urgot right there. The only problem there is that Sejuani literally has nobody to help her stack her passive. Um, so she's going to be working really hard to try to do that herself. Uh, but there is a lot of engage. Uh, on the side of Hoagie's heroes and the Azir to help stall out right there. Um, and then the Shen. So the Shen's actually a decent counter right there. I do like the Shen also for help with like the Malzahar and the Kha'Zix. Uh, obviously you get a global pressure from that. So if we are R, I'm going to be, I'm just going to tell them, like you just type R whenever they're typing R, Chris, because, yeah. But with all this said and done, I'm trying to think about whose team I prefer on this team comp setup. I think if it goes late, that a Tristana Azir beats a Malzahar Sivir. And Sivir is literally the only person who can kill Sejuani, but it's going to be tough. I'm excited. To see how this goes. Although, who the heck is, is Iron Poor Noob playing the Azir? Because that'd be good. That'd be good. make a post about it real quick said I wouldn't I didn't it wow what a guy hmm super hoagie on the Tristano with happy by three on the Nami. Okay. I can totally see that. And in some ways, I think that's even better. Pokey on something like a Tristana, he's very good about that. Biggest thing is going to be Malo's heart is going to have the early push, but round three to six, Azir has better push. And then I think the lane to gank for Labyrinth, who's playing the Kha'Zix, will be mid lane. Bukake Poro has the easiest setup in the mid, while I can see some chances for some desync synergy in mid lane from Sejuani and the Azir. So yeah, there's opportunities there, but hopefully it doesn't happen.
character. Hey, what's going on? I am now joined by the other jungler of the team I played against. Vitalis to Digisus. Hey, 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 what's going on? Yeah, man. Good. GG's. Yeah, GG's, dude. Good times. And welcome to the game. Yeah, thank you. So, I will... I don't know if you can see Champ Select. Uh, if you're watching LOL stream. versus Heroes? Yeah. All right, yeah, I got stream pulled up. We're good to go right now. <laughs> All right, then. Do you want to do play-by-play, -play or do you want to do color? I got PvP, dude. Let's do this. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, don't worry. You don't have to do that. No, I'll just spectate off of you once we get in, so we'll be good to go. I don't know if you can spectate off someone spectating. I think you can. Spectate Otherwise... description, everybody. Yeah. Just spectate Hoagie. Yeah. Okay, brothers. So this is game two. Ooh. Game two. Spicy. Who won game one? Uh, Hoagie's Heroes won off the backs of Iron 4 Noob and Needless Steel, according to the MVP poll. That's, but, uh, that's pretty good yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. I'm... I am interested to see that it's gonna be Django Unchained on the Shen top into this Urgot. That's not unusual, but he is he is the female LCS Flexmaster, and we've seen him busting out tons of unusual picks. Um, especially like he played Klepto TF, uh, I believe it was the last game he played last week. Yep. Actually, no, it was the game he played this week. And then the week before that, he busted out uh, Lethality Caitlyn in the season opener and still won that game somehow. Lethality Caitlyn OPOP? He's busted. Yep, they, sh they should nerf Caitlyn. I'd agree. Buff Kog'Maw. No. Yeah, Actually, buff yeah, Buff Kog'Maw, dude. C-Van would love that. He's up uh, there. AD, AD Kog'Maw only. Oh, okay. I think we should buff the AP ratio on his ult if I about, like, Hell 100%. no, are you kidding me? We got AP Kog'Maw, dude. That champion, that champion doesn't need to... AP Kog'Maw should never have existed. That thing is actually cancer. You know, out of all the things I've played against in this game, AP Kog'Maw was one of the least annoying things, honestly. Like, yeah, don't well, get that's... me wrong, it was still annoying. Like, it's, it's, like, pretty... It's on a definitively annoying champion tier list, for sure, but I think it's pretty low on that tier list. Yeah, I mean... When there's Zoe at the top, and then Yumi right below, and then everything else is in a gap after that, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I might put Yumi above Zoe, though. Disgusting. I think the only reason that you feel that way is because you're a bot laner. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's kind of disgusting just to watch the support just sit in someone and just... Like... It's, it's like the meme video you sent on Facebook. The man literally just won out, like take a drive like spun a fidget spinner did all this stuff and, like came back and he won the game yeah it was amazing so 30 seconds left i still think that like the ease of execution come like mid to late games gonna be on hoagie's heroes because they just have like the press r nami press r Sichuani, but the mouth of heart in the earlier parts of the game i think will take over so if they can snowball their lead and then get silver to two three items i think it'll be good yeah, one of the interesting picks here is the Kha'Zix for Labby, actually. That's not something you typically see in any form of competitive play. Is Kha'Zix's playstyle usually, I don't want to say devolves, but most of the time shines in the solo queue type of playstyle and environment. But, and especially with such a champion, that it's very difficult to make work in a team setting. And the fact that it's not even meta right now, like Lavi's got an uphill battle against like the elements of against Surprise. the elements of yeah. <laughs> I think the only thing that that does trouble me is that if he ever meets Sejuani, that's just not going to go well. But outside of that, I think he can do some good damage to the likes of like the Azir or Tristana. Uh, but you know, we'll see how this works. Uh, no real weird keystones here. I think for anybody, uh, the only person I was really looking at to see is what the Shen went, because I know that Django and Chain is kind of known for 
a little bit of weird stuff. Uh, both lethal tempo running for Azir and Sivir, so that's fine. And Hillary Clinton on that power pick Urgot. I think we've seen a lot of that recently as well. And Hillary Clinton makes his returns to the soft lane, I believe. I feel like there is a previous week where he played mid or something like that. So I think they've... Maybe Hoagie's heroes has run the same consistent roles all season. I'm not sure, because they have a lot of opportunities for flex on that team. Yeah, with a... Uh, I mean, Hillary Clinton getting four banned... Uh, against this in this you know little draft right here so it'll be interesting uh pause at 10 sure pause at 10 also make sure that we flip the overlay at the top and show lll on the opposite side with heroes having one okay <laughs> oh no i'm just i'm just looking at it that's not a flame to you even though i know that was you you hate this. Uh, yeah, pause, pause at 10 seconds, Chris. Or pause, pause at 30. We'll pause at 30 because okay. Spooked is already there. You're playing with fire now. 30 it is. Yeah. All right, I'm good to go. I'm waiting. Pause at 34 instead. Get to 30. All right, I see at 30. 30. All right. All right. I'm at 30. Okay. okay. Alright, 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. Alright. We're in game, we got the 5 point defense being opened by uh, both teams. Well, it's 5 point defense for the side of uh, Labby's Lusty Lads over here, and uh, 4 point for the side of Hoagie's Heroes, but you know, mid lane, no mid lane, no problems, dude. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be Mountain Drake that spawns first, so that'll be something that they kind of maybe want to play around. Yeah, and that's gonna be big, especially looking at the turret taking power of you know, Super Hoagie on the Tristana and Iron Four Noob. Mid laner's not necessarily known for blowing up turrets, but you know, Azir traditionally building both attack speed and AP means late game with the AP scaling, he can melt turrets pretty hard. Yeah, they do have a good turret taking team on the side of Hoagie's heroes for sure. On well, the Urgot purge too. Yeah, yeah, actually so much damage. Yeah, and I do I do think it's going to be really nice to see how they play in chokeholds cuz uh Sivir is going to be good in the river, but if it's in a chokehold, you definitely don't want to play against Azir, uh Nami and uh Sichuani. Yeah, the amount of zone control they actually have and is pretty gross. If the Azir capable of covering corridors, Azir is like the prime, you know, face of the don't fight in corridors type thing. It's like don't chase, like don't chase Singe, like same concept. You see Azir don't fight don't Rumble fight. in corridors, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of sense. So, you know, starting out this early game here, some things to expect. Iron 4 Noob, a little bit of early damage on Bukake Boro in the mid lane here. Ooh, hook lands on a minion. Just getting warmed up, you know? Oh, some early damage in the mid lane, though. Yep, Neil going buff to buff on the jungle route. A little bit interesting. Uh, maybe looking to path top. Uh, doesn't, again, as I mentioned in the draft, he has nobody who can help him proc his own stack, so he has to do it himself. Lavi, meanwhile, going to be a camp ahead, it looks like, and what he can clear. Yeah, um, so these jungle roots are kind of interesting, because uh, the camp that's highest priority right now is the drug camp. Drug. Offers by far the most experience. Usually any jungler that can afford to take drug camps is in a pretty good spot. Kha'Zix is not really one of the ones who can take Krugs very well. Try doing the clear with Machete, it's not a fun time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do Machete. If you run Talisman, you can try to do it and maybe do it like after Raptors. But you're going to probably doing a hard reset, kind of like a Silas. As we see Labyrinth walking in the bot. Yeah, he surprised you. You get the play backwards. That's some good damage there. Lavi ping visits to the bot lane and Normally, probably not the best gang side up in the world, but you know, he's got a little time to blow after that pathing advantage in the jungle, so probably not going to end up hurting him. But uh, Neil actually paying a visit 
over to the other side of the jungle. I would love to see him flex some matchup knowledge there and go for the Krugs camp. Because after seeing Kha'Zix bot, Kha'Zix is not commonly a champion who can take Krugs, so that would put a free camp to jungle from. Yep, and he does right there. Where are you at? I'm at 58, 59, 4, 1. Uh, just pause for half a second. You got it? Alright. Yeah. Perfect, and uh, speaking of counter jungling here, Labby also having a look-see on the other side of the enemy jungle. Gonna get the run on the Raptors camp. Raptors, Raptors and Wolves kind of sitting around the same value. You know, they're the good, like, tier two camps Ooh. right now. And, ooh, some big damage in the mid lane, forcing Bukake Poro's flash out. I'm for a new flexing some dominance already. And Super Oki goes in for the all-in on the bot lane. Joystick, though, dropping both suns, getting out immediately. And Labby going into tower in the mid lane, trading fast for flash with iron for noob. So much action in this early game already. But Neil the Steel, he's coming for a bit of a flash with Smells of the Q flash comes in the first blood to Neil the Steel. Wow, what a nice Q flash into that knowing that he didn't have it, probably also knew that he didn't have the damage to stop him with the play, but Django Unchained. Ooh, it's on under the turret. That's some damage to throw back. That's another turret shot, though. So many yeah. turret shots. You hate to see it. Yeah, when he looks at that new revised death recap, he's going to be like, wow, that was a lot of turret shots. As hope you just dodges that turret. Good dodge on the hook. So, you know, I got the foolproof method to reading all movements until you hit, like, high play at when you play a hook champion. First hook, throw it at their hitbox. Read their dodge, right? Second hook, take a guess. Either throw it at the same place or throw it to the other place. They dodge the same place. They'll dodge the same place every time, or they alternate. There's pretty much no other two options. So after two hooks, you can pretty much read what they're gonna do the third time. Easy so peasy. You, with that statement, anyone who's looking at how to dodge hooks could just take your advice and just do the same thing over and over. Exactly, they could do the same thing over and so, over. So, wow! Just get better at hooking, forehead. <laughs> just get better at hooking. Exactly. Just, uh, just read them, dude. It's that easy. Just hit their hitbox, Tom. <laughs> yeah. In general, um, you're looking for, like, cons not necessarily consistent dodge patterns. You also want to make sure you're covering, you know, the most ground with your hitbox. For example, you don't throw it all the way to the right, predicting the dodge pattern, right? You throw it a little to the right, so it hits them on one side of their hitbox, they make the dodge, and it hits them on the other side if they do nothing. So you cover two out of three options there. Yeah. Uh, Django and Chain, unfortunately, has done this twice now, where he doesn't bring the... Oh! Ooh, mid lane spice. The ult coming in from Bukaki Poro. Labby here to answer, though, the immediate shuffle back from Iron Four and Noob. Doesn't want any of this, but unfortunately, he is flashless. Gonna get run down by this Kha'Zix here. Yep, there it comes. The kill for Labby. Yep, as I was saying, that point and click R right there, man. You can't continue to trade if you don't know who the enemy jungler is. Should have known. Yep, rough times. And uh, speaking of rough times here, oh, he's good. Rocket jump. Yeah, so a couple of things to take note. While Jingo did get the kill in top lane, he is actually still slightly down in gold because it's a massive CS discrepancy right there. Yep, and uh, I feel like despite the fact that Jingo and Chain's been having some good plays in this lane, overall Hillary Clinton's like been playing the lane better for the vast majority of it. So it's like he's going not going to have that many problems bullying him out, even though he's down a kill. He's got the wave in a good position right now, and he's been consistently putting pressure down. He's got the CS lead. It's going to be a little rough for him, and uh, good good uses for the back timers in the bot lane as well. For a yep, he's going to be taking that dragon right there. Neil the Steel not only securing first blood, but first objective take. A pre-eight minute mountain drag. Really, really nice. There's usually only one first blood, but looks like there's two first bloods now. You got them both. What a guy. How do you get double first blood? I don't know, dude. Yeah, but Teach what about... Teach me how to be a good one. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, Lord of the Rings, but what about second first blood? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh. Hillary Clinton catching out Labby. Yep, the unsafe invade in the jungle, actually predicting the jump away, not going to come. The ult goes wide, but the Glacial Prison does not kill for Neil the Steel. That's 2-0. Oh. 
Yeah, I do wish that they, they knew that his flash was down, I believe, and he could have loved to have seen that go towards Hillary Clinton. But getting an unkillable demon boar tank is just as good, I guess. Yep. And, uh, I forgot what skin that is. Is that like. It's like. That's the Dark Cider like? or whatever. Oh, yeah, Dark Cider. <laughs> Ghost Rider Sejuani. The all in coming in in the bot lane, though. It's Joystick and ATX Prod forced to back out of that one. It seems for Sun is all in. It's just too scary. And especially for Nami heal. But speaking of all ins, the Shuffle Combo comes in. Pukaki 4 dropping the Never Grass. Though, can he make the turn? Probably not. The Azir damage is so huge. I'm oh! walking into the void. He's getting chomped down. Bukake 4 with the solo kill. Oh, Bukake for played that so well at the very end. And Pine for Noob's Flash is just coming up because he could have secured that, but my goodness, very close place. Also, I want to note that the it reaction uh, by joysticks to bubble, to, to spell shield that bubble, really, really huge in the play. Neil the Steel. Ooh, he comes in the flash under the turret, but the stand united comes in. Is it going to be enough? No! Bukake Poro going to go down with one last auto, but. Jingo and Chain getting the revenge kill though. Uh, and Labby, are we gonna say a dive? Is Ooh. this allowed? Uh, I think it's gonna be allowed because the hook comes in. It's clean. Joystick gets the kill under turret. The clean bit. No, that's so much damage from Hogan's bomb. Now he's stuck in the thresh. Oh. Ooh, that oh interaction is amazing. Hoagie! Hoagie's being his own hero currently right now as Jingo and Chen comes back to top lane with double buff, so that's unfortunate. And you know, Hoagie does not need a hero today, it seems like, because he's out there getting things done in that bottom lane. And so uh, Tristana Rocket Jump is actually one of the jankiest interactions in the game overall, because you drop your skill shot too early, so like right when it's buffering, the rocket jump basically goes straight through it, right? So, like, that includes Blitzcrank Hook, that includes so many things. It's kind of the same way that you can hit Ezreal's Arcane Shift with the skill shot, and he'll still shift away, right? Yeah, input buffering, yeah. Yeah, but in the case of Tristana, you just wait, you be a little patient, you wait until you see the animation start, and then you can do something like flash play forward and draw him back, because the animation is slow and prolonged, unlike Ezreal's, which is an actual blink, so then there's outplay potential once Tristana's actually started the animation, but before that point, the buffering animation goes straight through like Ezreal's he does. Mm -hmm. Ooh, seeing a lot of action though on the top side. Neil Steel and Hillary Clinton found Jingo Unchained. The ooh, Fear Beyond Death goes wide though. Jingo Unchained doing his best to run away. Gonna find that blast cone, gonna get himself safely over that wall. A okay. Doesn't even need to burn flash right there. Really nice. Also, Hillary Clinton second missed ultimate right there. But they've moved the ADC and support right there, but Oh, great Nethergrass comes in, but the shuffle from Iron for Noob barely going wide, and somehow everyone gets out of that one alive. So, uh, yeah, Labby's got no flash now. Shuffle's a little bit short. Labby, no flash. Uh, but they didn't even punish them, so they just did that off of a back timer from Joystick. Really nice play, actually, right there. Um... Hey, Chris, if you can hear me, can you please just flip the overlays to where Labby's team's on Labby's side and Heroes is on Heroes side? Uh, I think you can just do the edit, right? Or do you only have one monitor? Ah, uh, that's okay. Funny. All right, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so right now taking a look at the game state, just a 200 gold lead, which kind of just manifested itself in this top lane farm. Uh, that's going to be the difference. And the jungle CS. Jungle CS and levels. My goodness. Neil the Steel with a two-level lead over Labby right now. Just obviously the more efficient jungler in terms of... Oh, and Iron 4 Noob keeps on taking these aggressive trades when he doesn't know where the jungler is. And Bukaki doesn't have his ult up yet. But... Scary. And uh, Labby sitting in that bush again. Here he comes. The camo comes through. Iron 4 Noob flashing away, though. Labby going on his turret, though. He wants it. He gets the kill. He's dead. Yep, too many turret shots there. Shame it's not a level 11 Kha'Zix, but the Stand United coming to save Bukaki Poro from the Sejuani gank. Likely not going to be enough again as Bukaki Poro burns down to the Cinder Hulk and the Red Buff. And now Jingo Unchained is caught the wrong side of this very angry boar and her rider. Oh, yeah. the duel's tight. 
getting the slashes, but Jingo and Chain get a back out on the end, not wanting to risk that. Yeah, it is uh, a little bit interesting. Neil the Steel literally just saying, okay, I have four kills. I'm just going to build, build Trinity Force. No, but like he's just he's playing very well right now. Um, as Hillary Clinton has a lot of alone time and is going to try to get first hour by 14 minutes. But so turret plate falls and he's going to get that probably. No problem. Malzahar TPing up top, though, to save that tower. The turrets save. On one hand, I like that trying to make sure they get first turret flood. You know, that's nice to always stop the pressure. But the question is, with the pressure Hillary Clinton's putting out, that turret's basically a done deal at this point. So my question is, with that teleport, can they actually answer anywhere to make that worth it? And the answer is probably not right now. It's well, a matter what of what I would have really liked is they do have that ward in the bot lane brush. He could oh, that would have been TP exciting. there. Yeah, that would have been uh, a But they lose team. mid lane turret mid anyway, and I think that's actually the more important one, especially because Iron Four Noob wants to try to get as much gold as he possibly can. And they're starting up this mountain drake right now as uh, Super Hoagie. Just going to rocket jump away. Dangerous, and uh, Hoagie drawing pressure in the bot lane, though, is probably going to give them the time they need to finish this dragon. The contest coming in, though, and the Sun just still off as the fight breaks out. Jinko Chase found Iron Four Noob on the side. That Zero's going to go down very quickly. Contest comes in. He also kills the dragon, but can he make it out? Can Arkansas straight over that wall? And now Hoagie is the next target. Neil Steel, great glacial prison for the disengage, but Bukake Par has found his mark. The Nethergrass comes in, but that boar is so beefy, the flash over the wall comes out. Neil the Steel and the rest of Hoagie's heroes is likely going to escape to safety on this one. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, Hillary Clinton still has TP and is just going to get the turret. So they get, get the get, dragon. Get, get, you get, 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 get. Yeah, yeah you can't uh, steal from Neil the Steel. It's literally in his name. Uh, so they get one kill. On to Iron Four Noob, who is not having the best of early games, unfortunately, sitting at that one and four. But as it stands right now, they're up two towers and two drakes. Uh, but it looks like they are going to be able to raise the bot lane uh, turret right here to try to get this gold almost back to equal. And the only Wait. objectives on the map will be Hoagie, stay in the. Okay, yeah, there we go. Rocket jump away. It's fine. So, Neil lost the dragon. I think what we had have done there is switch teams and put Jingo Unchained in play in his place in jungle, so that way we can have Nolan the Stolen. No. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. <laughs> We're gonna uh -uh. do that. It's in. Nope. So they're doing this on Vision now, they know that they're doing it. They don't have they do have mid lane prior, they have a numbers advantage, and this is gonna be a really close one as oh, I don't know who got it. Comes in. I have no clue who got it either, Hillary but it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, he's got that Ooh. fat purple hero buff. Great flash away from the fear beyond death though. Wabby though, it's sound happy by three in the bottom lane. So it's a multi prog fight. Iron Four Noob found the shutdown on the top side. And Super Hokey drops in the bottom side here. Bukake Poyo gonna get mowed down by Hokey's heroes in the top lane. And opposite oh, oh. teams coming out on top on opposite sides of the map. That's an interesting place for a herald, but Neil is there to protect that herald. Okay, and then now Joystick is behind everybody. Directed camera had a lot of trouble. Aiden Prodigy is about to just get mowed down. Oh, the Glacial Prison! <laughs> Ooh, you're clean, dude! You see this man walking here, they say get the heck out! Not in Neil the Steel's mid lane. He is the jungler, but everything is this man's... This man's domain. Mid lane, top lane, his jungle, enemy jungle, Rift Herald Pit, Dragon Pit, doesn't matter. This man is a world... This man is a world eater, dude. Not even playing Cho'Gath. Feels bad. Yeah. But, um, so, with all that, they took two towers, got three kills, uh, the enemy team got two kills, I believe, and, yeah, Maybe now we're at a state. Points. Now we're at a state right now to where if you're the side of Labby's lusty lads, you really need to. Such a great name. <laughs> yeah, you need to you need to start making a little bit more proactive plays. Play around some vision a little bit more. Uh, the next dragon is Cloud Drake. You don't really want to fight for it, but you know that they're probably going to set up for it because, uh, you know, people like to play for dragons. The only thing I would do is say, screw the dragon. I have double mountain. Let's take this Baron if I'm Hoagie's heroes. 
So you always just need to keep at least uh, some vision on the top side so you know what's going on because they do take that very, very fast. Yeah, and the one thing, Double Mountain is going to be nice, especially with the Tristana and Azir in the pit, perhaps, and the Urgot too. You know, the one thing you could say is there are no melee champions besides Sejuani, so you know, Sejuani Permafrost is actually a big, a relatively big factor of damage on objectives, especially when you have multiple melee champions on your team. But, you know, that mere factor probably isn't going to cause Ooh. problems for a team with that much Baron taking prowess anyway. Yeah, Lavi had to burn Flash, doesn't even get the Scuttle. Oh, got the Scuttle right there, but still had to burn his Flash for it. Uh, okay. As a four-man strong, just going at this. Ooh. Looks like troubling times in the kingdom because this is Azir's kingdom now, and Bukake Poro has stepped in the wrong spot. What a shuffle, Flash. Yeah, and then both ults being used right there. Django's now gonna fight right underneath the tower. Hillary Clinton is tanking up, almost gonna Ooh, get that right there. this one finds the mark, he drags him in, puts him in the grinder, the solo kill for Hillary Clinton. Now Iron Ford New though, gonna get caught out by Labby in the bot lane, and the Cossacks has found his mark wow. to a fourth kill. <laughs> that spell shield though. Yeah. I like that. Jo jo Joystick has been pretty much on point with all these spell shields, but still, they get a solo kill in the top lane, get a kill on Bukake Poro right there, and are going to be able to get the top lane tier 2. Uh, so a nice other economy turn, as I don't believe Hillary Clinton has ever left the top side of the map, barring mid lane fight with that Herald. He traditionally plays top, because I know Jingo and Chain's a sub. I forget. I, I don't know. I don't know to quote Gert. <laughs> Just to show you how much I know of these teams, man. Yeah, hold on. Give me a second. I can try to find out. One second's up. But all right, looking, you know, looking forward into the game here. If I'm gonna have these lusty lads, you know, I got the pit comp here. You got the sivir to move people around the Shen ult to shield people. You have the tools to get in and out, especially with Kha'Zix juking and the guaranteed lockdown you have in Malzahar and a decent fresh skill shot. So the two areas of concern I'm looking at, ward up their jungle, ward up the Baron, and perhaps farm up a little bit. Keep Jingo Unchained in the side lane right now. The one struggle for them though is with him in the side lane, they really don't have much of a front line. But that Shen does need to catch up a bit in farm in order to be relevant. So, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a two-way pull that they have there where the optimal option is to is to four one with Shen, but they're so far behind that if they do that, they're just gonna lose a fight if they get engaged on. Yeah, I think four one is is fine. The only problem I, I actually see is right now it's still a level discrepancy between these junglers. You can't take a 50-50 smite fight. Also, um let me check this really quickly. It says Juwani just hitting that 3,000 mark threshold. So that's good. So the Warmark is active. Uh, their, your usual top is actually uh, Sebastian, Uncle Jemima, so. Oh yeah, that's right. Not sure what's happening. They're trying to set up really good vision right here. Um, about a six, almost a 6,000 gold lead right here. Excuse me, five. Counting is hard, children. Stay in school. You stay in drugs, don't you, school? Wait, that. Oh, wait, that's actually the, that's the wrong one. School oh, well. okay? Oh, Before you know, and uh, three. picking a bad, that's a bad place to be. Happy by three, though, is out, but Cocky Boy found the mark. Pretty good QSS by Hoagie to escape, and now Neil Steel is on the front line. This Azir has so much zone control in the corridors, though. Great flash to escape the Glacial Prison on the top side, and looks like Lappy's Lusty Lads are all out for the time being. They've turned it. Neil Steel goes down the shutdown to Bukake Poro. Iron Four New, though, has found the double kill, and Lappy's going ham with the jump resets. Happy by three, flashing out. Jingo and Chain flashing over the wall. The taunt lands. Can he finalize the kill? The last slash comes in. And that's the gonna slash be slash bringing slasher taking the down. Wait, there's no slog of slasher on this team. Hold on. No, the slash bringing slasher. Uh, so what I think is kind of crazy, as it's now a they've erased two thousand of or one thousand of that gold lead. Uh, right there through all that, but Hillary Clinton's never in these fights, and they're barely eking out wins or losses either way. 
Uh, this is, uh... Yeah, this is interesting. Because I wonder what would happen if, like, Hillary Clinton was in that fight. Like, do they just win and then they get Baron and then put... Uh, no TP. I think only using TP for side lanes and still in there in the bot lane. Also, I think Neil the Steel missing that ultimate and then also just greeting a bit too much walking into the enemy team. But Azir doing enough damage to take care of the threats of Bukake Porto and Joystick. Ooh, really that's good. An ambitious shift. You know, I feel like this is such a weird game now, especially in the mid lane, because I feel like both the mid laners currently have the old tactical inching starter pack, right? They've had by far probably the most plays in this game, besides maybe Neil the Steel, and yet they both have the worst KDs in the game. And uh, Pukaki Poro, though, he's getting run down! Fight's already started, Neil the Steel's found one, the Glacial Prison comes into the back line, Fear Beyond Death comes out, Joystick goes down! They're winning this fight, and they're winning this fight hard. That's a double kill for Nil the Steel. Three for zero on the side of Hoagie's Heroes. Iron 4 Noob has found the fourth. And that is likely going to be the game as Hoagie's Heroes here pushing into the base. That's the first Nexus turret going down. Tristana has so much turret destroying power. The entire team's here. Yang's all here. Take it away, Penny. Hoagie's Heroes in a win game two. Yeah, very good, and the kill right there at the very end. 25 minutes on the dot, almost. Right there, Hoagie's Heroes making it happen. 20 to 14 in kills, and an, almost an 8,000 gold lead, and 9 to 1 to Towers. Pretty much just from the beginning, uh, you know, we're going to transition into MVP poll. Uh, but Neil the Steel kind of stole the show, if, if I have to say it. Uh, so that's why he's named Neil the Steel. It's like, normally he, like, because he doesn't steal a dragon. His dragon control is great, right? You can't steal it when you're just taking it, so. I mean. Oh, it's genius. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm gonna look through chat. Surge up two levels is not what you want to see. Hey Vuvu, how's it going? Oh, uh, oof, that was a tragic mistake. Game scene's really coin flippy. Are you saying Neil is stealing this game? Lol, you hate to see Trish burning cause flash. Chad Pengu, Neil steal the draft. Duh, Chad P Flex three. Chad P Flex. All right, I so I I honestly think that it's either Neil the steal. You can make an argument for Super Hoagie as well. He had the nice outplay in the bottom lane where he got the double kill return. Uh, Hillary Clinton applying a lot of pressure on the map and was just never answered. Ever. That's true. Had the And only had the one death, which was under tower. Do we have a straw poll coming or should I make that? Uh, make it. You make it. Okay. Straw oik. That's what happens when you lose your typing spot, kids. Yep. Swap hole. Straw oik. <laughs> All right. Heroes versus LLL. Oh, I'm good. Good to have you, Vuvu. We always like other people. So uh, like a Vuvu Zewa? No, no, you're a Vuvu Zewa. You just never Mine's a Vuvu Zewa. <laughs> Some people say what? I feel like I feel like me cutting off. You cut me cutting you off right as you said you never stop was by far the best thing that could have happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never stop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. Hey. Yeah, well, you know, the more you know. You don't even have to finish your sentence to be right. I think Iron Four Noob is a contender for MVP two. He had a rough early game, but he ran the fights after twenty minutes. Uh he did have the big play in that top side one. And he did the nice flash shuffle. Uh, but just to your point, there was only five minutes after 20 minutes. So there was 20 minutes where he wasn't having it. So just doing that math. I just think also Azir in the mid lane, not, not generally looks for a lot of plays, but he was making a lot of plays and he was making them with the jungler. So obviously if those kills would have gone on to like Hillary Clinton or I'm for noob would have been a little bit different. Um, but, you know, Iron Four Noob doing his job once he did get that Nasher's Tooth, for sure. Look, let's look at some damage stats real quick. 
yeah, he did almost 19,000 damage in a 25 minute game. Huge. Uh, Neil the Steel actually out damaging his ADC by almost 600. So there. Pretty good for a tank, I guess. Yeah. Only five minutes after 20 because I turned on, though. Factual. That is also factual. So go vote in that straw poll. See that young straw poll coming out. Neil the Steel off to a tenuous lead, though. Three votes to two over Iron 4 and Noob currently. I just don't do any damage. I just sit here and look pretty. Ooh, ooh. All right. Glad to see you're doing well. I mean, he looked very pretty. The team ran. Their bot lane tried to kill him instead of going for Dragon that one time. So, I mean, he's not wrong. Yep. ADC doesn't need damage if he just doesn't end. Oh, hi, Bear. <laughs> and, yeah. Just don't end two deaths. Come on. Anybody with more than two deaths on this team is obviously the real carries. So, happy by three by proxy will be the MVP. No. You saw me on UTD. Yes, we all saw. Oh, we're going to close the pool in probably about one minute, and then we'll do some MVP. <sighs> Right now, Neil Steele's still got the lead, currently accruing half of the eight votes in this uh, MVP poll right now. Four of the eight votes. In a good sense, my voice is fucking shot, dude. Oh. Excuse me? Your excuse? Might be. <laughs> good. Glad we had this discussion. Understandable. Have a nice day. Yep. <laughs> Neil the Steet? Neat the Steet. Oh, Neat the Steet. Beat the... <laughs> That's good. I like that one. All right, Neil the Steel is the MVP. All right, so who... Uh, also, Neil the Steel is the Game 1 MVP as well. So if Captains and Neil want to come join us and play the Game 1. Oh, he's got me here already. Here on the fast fingers. So yeah, sweep the street, fleet the feet, fleet Hello, the feet. gentlemen, neat the yeet, and we are joined by his illustriousness here. Uh, hey Neil, what's up guys? All right, chat, get your questions ready. Um, so tell us about game one. How did that go? Uh, game one was a uh, um, but uh. We, we made some really decisive Some small windows to take some objectives, but we felt very confident in those windows. Hi. Just pulling, pulling the trigger on, on, on calls rather than last week. We were a little hesitant to make some, some obvious calls. So felt a, felt a lot more confident uh, today. All right. And uh, you have a shout out in chat from Jewel Baca saying, Neil. So there you are. What up, Jewel? Uh, Maximilian says, how does it feel being such a daddy? Ooh, ooh. And Jewel Baca ooh, says, ooh, ooh. Jewel Baca says, how does it feel to be like the doc? You know, the two time. The two time. The two time, the back to back 1993, 1993 Buster video game champion. Hey, boy. Slick daddy. Um, no, I mean, I don't know. Sejuani. It's a stupid pick right now, and so it's not my best jungler, but she's just super strong right now, so it's it's easy to get ahead. And I like a nice tank, nice kinky front line. I love that. For you to do all that damage that you did, right? I didn't do anything. I just sit here and look pretty. I'm just I'm just a bait, okay? I'm just man, I'm just... he's getting them. Ah, uh, I see. I'm... So you draft an eighty carry that goes forward that could do damage. So then they'll focus you, and the real damage dealer does the damage. The gotcha. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the strats. Stop giving them away. Okay. Uh, and at some point, at some point, the mid laner just walks in and kills people. 
Yeah. <laughs> seen this. So, question from the likes of someone named Sayado. Men bung? And the answer is no. So, there. Bung. Um, I, yeah, no. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, bung. Bung. Any thought? How, what, what, what were your thoughts coming into the draft, guys? Like, uh, for both game one and two? When you're, when you're going to convince Labby's Westful lads, what are y'all thinking about? Well... Okay, so sorry, I heard some static. Anyways, uh, we were just strategizing what uh, what our win cons are, um, what what we wanted to do, what our objectives are. Because we came back from like a from a loss, we just couldn't we couldn't just like go in willy nilly and be like, oh, we'll be fine, we'll be great. But um, uh, no matter what, though, I I feel like going into the draft, I wanted us to make sure that we're all chill and we're all fine. We're we're mentally there because mentally. We gotta have a strong mental to have a strong game, okay? So we gotta keep that positivity up. Let's go. We can do this. And yeah. And then and then our coach helps helps us with uh with the strategizing, which we we were kind of just talking about what our wing cons are and what are what we want to play and what kind of like lanes we want to run. So yeah, Neil, what do you think? Yeah, um, yeah, coming in in chat, they spent all day making comps around Sebastian's champ pool, and then Sebastian wasn't here. So we, we wanted to prioritize their bot lane, um, ban out a couple of champions that we, we knew they were very comfortable on. And um, for game one, we felt we could win through bot lane, and game two, uh, the top lane picks that were coming coming out, we just really liked liked the top lane or got there. So kind of playing around that and uh, very comfortable, very comfortable in the draft. We knew what we wanted going in and we got pretty much everything we wanted. All right. Uh, well, if there are no more questions, honestly, we spent all day making constant special. I'm going to throw a fuck null on top. Kind of throw the head. Oh, yeah, for Oof, did, did a good job. TB was going to play a lot second game. And that fifth bank came in. Oh boy, we got my new it. I'm psychic. That's incredible. Your moose it has ESPN, everybody. Um, Wait, did you, what does he have? ESPN? Yeah, he probably got like a cable package or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Hopefully he got ESPN, that, too. Hmm. Yeah. The Ocho is the only way. The Ocho is uh, yeah, where you gotta go. So, uh, as it stands right now, that means Hoagie's Heroes are going to be at a 2-2 two and two game win-loss record. Uh, after last week's loss to Katarina Wine Mixer, uh, and I believe Labby's Lustful Lads will be now 1 in 3 game score after their match last week versus Biscuit Force 5. Uh, so next week, you heroes play against said Biscuit Force 5. Uh, what are y'all thinking about going up into that matchup? Um, I'm a little less, uh, I'm more, I'm more confident about our team, so I think we're gonna. I have to play a little safe. Um, my ADC performance has been a little lackluster recently, so I'm just I'm gonna practice, but also uh, probably kind of just look it out. And you know what? We're gonna be great. You know what? We have Happy by Three from Biscuit Force Five watching us, so you know we a little. Oh, little so there. he's leaking strats now. I'm a little terrifying, but. At the same time, uh, I know Happy by Three is a great guy, and he wouldn't do me dirty. Yeah, like big this. big shout out! Thanks for subbing in, Happy Thank, by Three. That was some awesome fishy fishy plays. Fishy, I love fishes. I love great fishes. Um, anyways, oh, sushi. Oh, sushis are so good. Anyways, um, well, that's what we're gonna make, Happy. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Ooh. Uh, All right. Well, I think that's going to be it here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, if you would like to get the official stats and I rankings for this game, just go to PMA LCS. And yeah, awesome. Great job, everybody. We did it, team. For all of us here at the Not So Lively Broadcast crew, I've been Sean and Mike Shannon, joined by Chris Vitatis Didesis. And that's going to be it. Thank you, Chris Spooped Bicer, for streaming. Thank you. Thank you.